welcome back to 6-5 on the road with my co-host, Dave Nicholson. Dave has been a bunch of great conversations today around the Solodyne ecosystem. Yeah. And no better guest than AMD, Robert, Mark, great to meet you folks. And well, Robert, we, we're, we're, long, we're long time friends. We, yes. we go back to the Tech Field Day community. Just, uh, you, you bought me some pretty cool graphics cards. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to call them AI chips. I you took, you to, di- I chips? took yeah. you to dinner last time I was you in Vegas. You even took me to so. dinner last time we were in Vegas. But I'd be much more appreciative if you gave me a Genoma chip. That would be like. We, we make a Genoa. Genoa. I'm sorry. <laughs> Genoa. Okay. Chip. Or Genoma. Genoma. Well, you know, I happen to have one. No! It's, it's, oh. it's not for sale, but this is our, you know, epic Genoa 96 core. 96 well, I'll, core. I'll let you, uh, you know, you can, you can touch and feel it, but oh, I'm going okay. to oh, keep an oh, eye on you. Oh. Do you make a stainless steel version that somebody like me could afford? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have Dave count the cores. <laughs> so that one uses our advanced 2D um, packaging technology, or, or, you know, it's a 2D packaging technology between a, an IO die in the center, and then all the outside dies are the cache core complexes. So walk us through the, 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 the nomenclature, if you don't mind. Epic? Epic is our CPU brand. Yeah. Genoa was the code name, um, not the branding. I think it's the 9004 or 9000 series is Genoa. The actual uh, product name is yeah, uh, yeah. the 9000 family. And this, and, the, and this is rolled out, like this is, this is like your, your latest iteration. Um, yeah. That one's uh, close to it's been in the market a year, for a while. about yeah, a year yeah. and a half to market. Yeah. We followed that with another version called uh, Bergamo, That's which right. was our dense core. So we took the same kind of core, which this is our high performance core. We did a, uh, a dense core where we're able to squeeze it down tighter and make some physical design trade-offs on cache sizes and stuff. But it's ISA compatible, instruction set compatible, and we're a pack 128 onto this same package, and so it drops into the same platform. And that one's optimized for cloud native. This is more your general purpose um, compute versus the cloud native. Got it. So what are the, give us some of the hero numbers. How much RAM, I mean, what, what, what can I do with 96 cores? Um, you can do a lot. Um, you know, right now it is, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, if you kind of think about it just in terms of world, well, let's just put it in terms of, of uh, some numbers, um, you know, in terms of like spec ant, spec power, um, any kind of database benchmark um, between Genoa and Bergamo, they have the number one on about 300 plus benchmarks that are standardized around the, you know, that the world uses. So those are your two premium CPUs on the market today. We have about a... Uh, 1.6, 1.7x performance advantage over the comp, and about a 2x perf per watt advantage, which comes into play uh, mightily in the in the era of AI. The performance per watt and energy efficiency is is key. And uh, you know, I have another toy. Oh, what that is I'll, this? Maybe I'll let Mark talk about this one. This is actually the 300x. So this is the Bear 300x, um, without the uh, the heat sink's kind of tall. Um, but this is our flagship GPU that we launched in December um, that has been shipping and uh, starting to be a- available in cloud instances today. So well, I'll let you look and maybe Mark, you want to talk about the 300X? So, yeah, yeah, sure. that was pretty smart that you gave it to me first, man, you have him talk about it. So he needs to hold it. <laughs> what you did. I, I, saw, I, I understand the strategy there. Yeah, this is a, a pretty powerful piece of technology you're holding in your hand there. And most people haven't seen it without the heat sink on it. So it's right. kind of a rare treat. This is a little different than Genoa in that it uses what we call 3.5D packaging technology. So it has the the 2D um, dies side by side on an interposer technology, but also does 3D stacking to get all that technology onto a single onto a single package like that. So there's 12 chips in there and eight stacks of HBM3 memory. So that has 304 compute cores, independent discrete compute core instances. It has 192 gigabytes of HBM3. Um, It delivers a ton of memory bandwidth to that HBM3. Uh, It has almost a terabyte per second worth of bandwidth that comes on and off that GPU to connect to other GPUs. It's a a pretty remarkable piece of technology. So how would 
OEMs package something like this? What would be the yeah. end product? Yeah, great question. I mean, that what you're holding there doesn't actually sell as a unit, even with the heat sink. We sell eight of them in a in a standards compliant form factor. It's you know we call it a UBB eight. It's OCP standards compliant. It at Cost at Costco. At Costco, yeah. You can go grab it off Amazon. <laughs> you can't buy one. Grab, grab you it off Amazon eight, if you can't make it to Costco. You get a bomb. You get a bomb. Bomb and bolt. Bolt. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah. So it ships in a, a eight instances at a time, all networked together, mesh connected with uh, what we call Infinity Fabric, which is a load store coherent, low latency, high bandwidth fabric that allows all the GPUs to communicate. And it's and it slides into existing infrastructure though that folks are familiar with from OCP compliant servers. So it's a uh, you know, one of the focuses we had with MI300X is to make sure that it was frictionless to adopt from the hardware standpoint, as I mentioned, but also from the software standpoint. Well, I was just about to ask you about the software standpoint. I think there's a lot of just uncertainty around software when we hear about the dominant player in the, sp in the space. One of the moats has been, or at least the perception of the moat has been software. So help, help us think through kind of you know, take us from the model that we might pull down from Hugging Face, and how do we get it onto a 300? Well, um, to the to the perception, you know, as I mentioned, the goal is frictionless portability of the software, and I think there is a bit of a perception issue here because this is not a first generation GPU. First of all, from AMD, right? We've been doing this for five plus years. We've been working on Rockham, which is the foundational software that drives Instinct for more than that, longer than that. And the strategy has always been functional compliance all the way down to the, to the library level if you're doing very manual tuning on this GPU. But it has also been ease of adoption by ensuring that we have support for AI frameworks, which is commonly actually today how AI programmers program. They don't program in CUDA. CUDA is often used as a reference when we're talking about you know, uh, the, the, the competition's overall software ecosystem. The reality is if you talk to an average enterprise, CSPs, they're mostly programming at an abstraction level that is entirely portable over to AMD. Literally no code changes. So frameworks like Python, like TensorFlow, like JAX, 100% portable with no code changes. Um, and so if you're downloading a model off Hugging Face, it just works. In fact, right now, um, as of today, I believe there's greater than 600,000 models on Hugging Face that are fully functionally portable as is over to Instinct. So Let's again talk about availability, kind of getting access to this stuff. You made a recent announcement with Microsoft. How, how do people who just need to dip in and out of whether it's training or some really large inference job, how do they get access to this without needing to order and have one of these come on site? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, there's a number of mechanisms. Obviously, as you pointed out, Microsoft just announced uh, that their uh, Azure instances are now available on MI300X. Uh, obviously, there's CSP partners that are um, you know, selling these capabilities for remote access and for uh, uh, in, that, in that manner. We also, within AMD, have an AMD Accelerator Cloud. So we do allow for remote POC testing on our own infrastructure. That's uh, based on you know, a prioritization that we help influence based on our strategic customer set that's asking for access. But we also have a number of OEM partners that are launching uh, products. Uh, many of them have been announced already. And they also have their own remote access capabilities uh, in many instances. So you don't necessarily need to buy one. Um, you can uh, contact any number of different partners, including some of the major CSPs, and you can gain access in that way. Yeah, I mean, Dell, Dell has a solution center where you know you can remote into and, and do POC work. Yeah. Um, you know, historically, and you know, you, you, I mean, one of the things that um, it, the excitement around this is profound because it's such a disruption in the market and bringing choice and competition. But you know, a lot of people ask, well, what's the intrinsic differentiator? And, and I try and sum it up really simple. Because we, we went after, you know, really disrupting the amount of memory capacity and memory bandwidth. You know, this has 192 gigabytes of memory. The competitors at currently volume shipping has, has 80. So what, you know, they need, if, they, if, if you're doing something that requires all eight GPUs and all the parameters of all the eight times 80, you can do it in three and a half of these. And when, you, and when, you, when you're referring to memory, that, that would be high bandwidth memory. That's, that is, on the, that's on this. On it. Yeah, that's the, these eight outside okay. chips are the HBM stacks. Which, as I understand from our semiconductor friends, 
means that you have less data traversing from one place to another over time, which means less power consumption. Absolutely. And on the subject of power consumption, if you, if you uh, kind of stick with me on the little analogy here, these two beasts that we have on the table need to be fed at least two things. One of them is power, of course. Mm -hmm. The other is data. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the requirements from a power and data perspective, you know, our friends at Solidime, we've been talking to a lot of folks in the ecosystem about um, the benefits of density derived through using QLC technology. Um, you've got the data there. It's solid state, so it's not sucking in the power that mechanical devices suck in. I have seen the completely packaged uh, MI300Xs with the with the, the cooling towers. How much do each of, how much power do each of these consume roughly? Do you know off about, the top of your about head? 750 watts. About 750 this watts. This is about 750, and this is probably at at the Genoa. This is around 380, 400. Yeah. Um, today. You start you start getting because a lot of times these numbers are we talk about you know a billion parameters a gazillion parameters and people we all nod our heads like we know what that means. <laughs> yeah. Everybody kind of knows what 750 watts is. It's not quite, but almost enough to power a hairdryer, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Sorry, my friend. Uh, but, but, so, <laughs> but so, Too so much. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but seriously, eight of these together, you start talking about significant power consumption, the power savings associated with having that memory resident instead of separate and what solid state devices that are very dense do for that whole equation enables this kind of open ecosystem. But what are the other, what are, what are the other challenges and considerations when you're engineering these things yeah. that you got to deal with? Yeah, I mean, I, I think if we start at, the, at a high level of, of kind of the challenges and work our way down to the components, if you kind of think of the, the state of the industry today of where we're at in terms of power, data center capacity, um, it's a, there's a power challenge going on. I've seen estimates that with the rise of AI over the next couple of years, we're either short 80 gigawatts of power or we're short 300 gigawatts of power. That's a lot of power to be short um, with the rise of AI. And there, there's a couple of things going on. If you look at the, uh, the vacancy rates in data centers today, it's less than 2%. It's at a historic all-time low worldwide. It's like 1.7. Um, so there's no room at the end. And if you look at the uh, new construction, which is, this is even more profound, the new data centers that are in construction, 84% of them are already leased and they're not done yet. So we have this problem with the rise of AI. Every business is driving towards, I'm, I'm gonna go do AI to disrupt my business, but now how do I go do it? And this is where the, the combination of like Solanine and Epic you know, we'll, we'll park this one on the side for a minute and talk about him in a minute. But, you know, we have to go create space and capacity in the existing data centers. Um, people have to drive that consolidation to make space and capacity. And so, you know, this is one of the best tools in the industry right now to go drive that. Um, you know, you can get for, if you have like five-year-old servers, five, six-year-old servers, you can do five or eight to one kind of consolidation. And so huge consolidation, which frees up that space power, and then you bring in the Solidine in, in NVMe low power that helps shrink that, you know, getting rid of old rotating five-year-old drives, shrink it all down. Now we're freeing up real space and capacity and power so that we can power uh, Mark's goodie over here, <laughs> um, which we need to, because it's basically, if you kind of think about it at a high level, if you take out maybe five or eight, you know, if you kind of take five or eight or about eight servers out today and consolidate to one, you've basically created enough power capacity to go put in one AI server so at a high level. Let's let's put some higher level abstraction to this to make this real. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of servers with this chip, a bunch of RAM. We haven't talked about like the limits of RAM, the RAM limits at all yet, and we'll get those numbers from you. But in theory and in practice, I can replace a rack of 10 2U servers with two 2U servers with these on it, running about a thousand or more VMs. Mm -hmm. That's some, yeah. that is some density. And now mm -hmm. we're talking about, so the next question goes to, well, what about local disk, yeah. et mm -hmm. cetera. Again. But, but, but by the way, that dynamic by itself, forget about AI, was actually killing the market for data centers. Because we, we, we there was a period of time where guys like Keith and I would look at that and we'd see this massive consolidation and it's like, 
people are lead, they're needing less data center space. Who wants to invest in building data centers? Nobody except hyperscale clouds, but. But, but Keith, you're, you're dead on. I mean, when we consolidate down, you know, eight servers that had 12 or 24 drives per server, you know, we, we're going to move all those workloads and all that storage has got to fit in the new box, which means we need higher performance, more efficient, denser, you know, uh, drive technology like Solidane is driving in the market to keep pace with the core count race that we're, the cores that we're pushing, we need the storage industry and the ecosystem to keep up. And you also need the I.O. performance because in virtualization, as we know, I.O., just like in AI, I.O. is almost always the bottleneck. You're not going to get that mm -hmm. type of I.O. out of spinning rust. And if you want to consolidate and you want to keep your power within the envelopes that you need within these data centers that you cannot rent right now, I think I looked out like data centers are, you know, data centers these size take a year to three years to mm -hmm. build and they are sold out. I have data center space from the CTO advisor data center. I'm not letting it go. It, it's going to be a hot commodity one day. So, you know, I'll, I'll resell that. Yeah. But I did want to get, I, I, I have to, uh, I like numbers. Uh, I like practicalness too, but RAM, how much RAM can I get into these? And the, we, we understand the graphics card capability. What about traditional CPU? How much can we get into this? Um, you know, so on Genoa, we support uh, 12, 12 channels per socket. So 24 in a 2U server, you know, two socket, 24 DIMM. So use the 96 gig or 128, you know, we're pushing two to four terabytes quite easily. Um, and again, so you're looking at, you're looking at a two node system with up to what, 24, uh, is, was it 12 terabytes? No, we're we're uh, at a per socket, you know, well, 24, just do 24 dims. You're 24 saying, dims and, at 96 or times 128. And they're so getting and dims two, are, two to four. Let's just say two to four terabytes. So two to four on, terabytes yeah. per per uh, server. So first server. So you're looking at up to eight terabytes of RAM, in two servers. Mm -hmm. The limitation around virtualization is almost always RAM. Mm -hmm. So even if the GPU, uh, the CPU cores are not being put to work, the RAM will be. And again, we see why we get this consolidation. Mm -hmm. Robert, Mark, we really appreciate you two coming down. I really appreciate you donating to the cause. <laughs> yes, we appreciate and Leaving that. the 300 and the that. epic, uh, we will put them to good work. We're gonna, yeah. Very we're expensive gonna, coffee. We're going we're gonna to co-parent. Yes, the, the, we, 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 we won't argue. We won't argue. <laughs> Thank you for me and my co-hosts. David Nicholson. This is always fun, especially when guests bring props. <laughs> Stay tuned for more coverage from the 6.5 on the road. Solidine, thank you again for bringing in awesome guests. Stay tuned.